In the previous video, we saw how we could use an integral to compute the arc length of some curve. In this video, we're going to kind of go up one dimension. We are going to look at surfaces, and a surface you can think of as something that lives in three dimensions, but it's sort of got a two-dimensional shell. For example, the exterior of, of a basketball you might think of as being sort of this two-dimensional surface, even though it lives in three dimensions. Now, we're not going to be able to compute the surface area of, of any old region, but there's a certain class of surfaces for which we can compute the surface area. In particular, what we're going to look at is surfaces that are formed by revolving a curve. So I want to imagine you have some curve, and what you're going to do is, is take this curve and revolve it around in a complete circle. And the sort of path of this curve that you have as it revolves around is going to create a surface. So I'm going to draw a random curve. And I'm going to think of this curve as being between two points A and B. And how I'm trying to visualize this idea of a rotation is I'm going to imagine that I am rotating around the x-axis. So I'm going to rotate around the x-axis. So if I'm rotating this curve around the x-axis, one thing I'm going to draw is a part that's exactly flipped over. I can do this sort of mirror image of the curve that I have. That's going to be the point that's exactly flipped over the x-axis. Every point gets filled in. So the way I, I sort of draw this is I imagine taking this point here at f of a, and it goes around in a big circle. I imagine taking this sort of point in the middle, and it goes around in a circle. I take this point at the end, and it goes around in a circle. And I get this sort of bell-like shape. Whatever the sort of curve that defines one portion of the bell, when I rotate it around, it creates this entire hollow bell. So what I'm trying to draw a picture here of is the surface that I'm going to be considering. So now that I have this surface, this, this rotation about the x-axis of some curve, my goal is, how do I figure out what the surface area of this curve is? So I'm going to draw the picture again, and I'm going to emphasize just one little piece of it. So I've drawn the curve again, and I'm going to focus my attention in on one little small section of this. And I'm doing this because if you remember how I figured out what arc length was, well, arc length is involved by taking your curve and breaking it up into the sum of little line segments. So I'm just drawing one little mini line segment here, and I can imagine that if I was to rotate this little mini line segment around, and I could sort of imagine circles formed as I roll it in, and, and maybe what I really could do is I could try to paint in here what the surface area of this one section is. It just sort of looks like a, a little rubber band. That's what my rotation around is going to look like. So if our broader goal is figuring out the surface area of the entire region, I'm going to do that by figuring out the surface area of this little strip that I've identified. And then my notion of integration is that I'm going to be adding up all of these little strips. So I first want to figure out what is the area of this part right here. That's my immediate goal. Now, to do this, I'm going to first note that the, the width of this little guy is going to be dx. I'm imagining that I am breaking this up into a sum of little delta x's, and then in the limit as n gets large, I'm going to replace my delta x's with dx's. That's the pattern we've seen with integration before. So I've got this little infinitesimal width dx. If I think about a regular cylinder, one that's a flat line, a horizontal line on the top, and then it revolves around, I know what the surface area for that type of cylinder is. It's just going to be whatever the circumference of my cylinder is, times my little bit of thickness. If, if we have here a height given by f of x, this, the radius here is f of x, and so the circumference is going to be 2 pi f of x. So what I've identified right here is this is the circumference. However, I can't just exactly apply the, the width to it. I can't just multiply by dx because it, it isn't a flat line. It's this sort of diagonal line, and I want to know what is the length of this particular component. And this is something that we've studied before, how to deal with these lengths, 
we are going to say it is the square root of 1 plus f prime of x all squared dx. So I'm going to plug that into my little strip that's not quite a cylinder because it's not flat. It's, it's got these angles to it. So I'm not going to multiply by dx. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 1 plus f prime of x all squared dx. And so that is going to be my little unit of area. All right. So if now if I have this little unit of surface area, I'm going to add them all up. I'm going to convert my sums into integrals, and I'm going to get the following formula. Namely, if I have a function which is sufficiently nice, and I'm only interested in the region between some a and some b, then the surface area formed by revolving that curve around the x-axis is given by this formula, the 2 pi x, which I think of as the circumference with radius f of x, and then multiplied by this little arc length, the square root of 1 plus the derivative of f squared. So now that we have this formula, we just get to go and apply it. So here I have the specific function 2 root x, and I've sketched it, and I'm going to imagine that I'm revolving around the x-axis, or at least the portion between 1 and 3. So I know that in my formula I'm going to have to figure out f prime, so I may as well go ahead right now and compute that. This is just going to be 1 divided by the square root of x. And then my formula is going to be that the surface area is equal to the integral between 1 and 3, that's over here, my limits, the 1 and 3, of 2 pi times f of x, so 2 pi times 2 root x, all multiplied by the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared, the derivative is 1 over square root x, it's just going to be 1 over x dx. So now it's just a matter of computing this integral. And, and maybe I'll just do one thing to, to put it into a little bit of an easier form. So now it's just a matter of computing this integral. And I'm going to do one thing to convert it into a slightly easier form. I'll bring out the 4 pi. And I, I have the square root x outside, and then I also have this square root of some other stuff. So I'm just going to combine my square roots together. I think that will make it easier. I'm going to say that this is the square root of, bringing the square root of x inside is going to have an x, and then it's going to be an x over x, so just an x plus 1 dx. And now this is just a simple u sub. All right. 